So uh, before we get into the film, I, I want to know a little bit about you, you know, your background. Uh, how did you get into acting? You know, and what else, anything else you want to share about yourself ultimately? Well, uh, I started acting when I was 15. Uh, I took some lessons in Vancouver uh, when Charles Stewart and, you know, there was a really early, this is the 90s. So it was, it was quite different. And, you know, living in Vancouver was great, but then I moved to the Kootenays, so I didn't end up continuing any more acting, but I took those skills I learned and went on with my life. I have a Bachelor of Science in Nursing now. Uh, My kids are grown. I'm a grandma. And I decided to go back into acting and film once they were older. Uh, My 40s are my new 20s, so I'll be 46 in a couple weeks. And it's my, it's, it's my goal since I was young to keep going. And I decided to just, you know, jump back into it in Edmonton. I found Facebook groups and people within the, the filming community. Uh, Fava is a great building in Edmonton that helps uh, for film artists to rent their building and facility and they help so much. So I found a lot of people that like to make their own movies and I helped at the Nate, which is the school where they go to the film school. And that's actually how I met Kyle. His friends also went there. So I I, I met that whole group of uh, individuals as they were each going through their years at separate years too. Some of them were newer than younger and helping out with like uh, school plays and things that Oh, my cat's so slow, by the way. <laughs> Just helping them out, you know, for like their school film and going there and just being a role it was a lot of fun because they would sometimes use like uh, old old scripts that have been around for a while so I knew some of them from even English school oh my dog wants to say hi to he's kind of anxious that I'm talking (laughs) (laughs) so getting back into acting was not as hard as I thought it was going to be because as soon as I started doing some stuff around Edmonton people found out who I was I started working as a PA too I wanted to learn everything yeah front end back so it's been about six years of PA work and doing film and commercials I even got my mom into it so my mom and I have a couple of photo shoots we've done with like Astor Gardens which is a a seniors facility in Sherwood Park and she has a blast and little Toki here is even in the pictures too so it's all it's a family affair <laughs> yeah it definitely is so there's ho- there's horror comedy in my books there's a lot of comedy but uh brandon rhinus is a buddy of mine that's wrote grotesque and i'm haunted and we've made some films that were funny and horror like but then kyle's was scary yeah and I, I am a haunt actor. I was a haunt actor at Rutherford Manor Haunted House in Edmonton, Alberta. It was the best experience ever. I started about three years ago. I asked uh, if I could be in the haunt and they asked me, well, like, what kind of stuff can you do? And I told them I could cackle like a, a witch and I can. And that could be heard in my first audiobook. actually. Mark Redfield invited me on Clubhouse to be in his book, audiobook, uh, Frankenstein Mobster. It's it's online now. It's on my social media. I am the cackling witch. And uh, the next year after that, COVID happened. So things slowed down a little bit. But we still, you know, Kyle's crew was small. Yeah. It was quite small. So we had lots of space. His parents' house is big. We, we all sat in different rooms waiting like, our turn. And uh, not that I met, I didn't even work with um, the dad and the kids uh, that day because oh. we did separate scenes. So I didn't even meet Dahlia, the young lady. So that was interesting to meet her at the premiere because I'd never met her in person. But I knew Lucas because I had worked on a, another little a student um, assignment. Yeah. for a friend and I met this little boy and his brother and their dad and then I asked their dad Ross if he wanted to be in a film and Lucas so that's how that happened and I just kept going with uh this has been 
August 2021 is when we made the film. Oh wow! So it's been a little while. So I've done a few more things, and you know, the the they're more like scary and mean stuff, not mean mom stuff, because you, I was playing some really funny, uh, comedic, you know, like grotesque. I'm I'm Nina, and I'm I'm very naive, funny character, and you know, the other ones I'm a very mean mom that you know keeps it uh fear <laughs> a lot of fear <laughs> in the room so it, it it's all good it's been building up and building up and you know but it's exciting it's really exciting yeah i mean definitely uh i i'm curious about like the can I, I mean obviously you guys you met kyle but how did he pitch this to you like how how does one even communicate this project to an actor we talked about um well he has a youtube yeah. page too so i've seen those things and i also like i grew up in the the late 70s 80s with like dark dark rooms at my grandparents and you know and familiar houses and i can remember that fear so that came really easy and I guess being a scare actor, I was into wanting to scare people in a scary movie. Yeah. So that totally intrigued me. And then it he called me because he knew I'd done a few mom roles. He'd seen me as a witch too. And other people said, you know, ask Jamie, which was wonderful. And so he asked me to be the mom role. And we spent a little while talking about what he wanted the film to be like and what it meant and like, not all the clips are in there. He had to really cut it down. Yeah. So I I know more clips that I got to shoot, which makes me understand the film a bit better. And then you guys get to put it all together, which has been a lot of fun to read about and figure out what you guys think and what my story is in there and like how it goes. So it's it's um, it was a lot about the thoughts of what he wanted to come by like it was a scripted he'd written everything out yeah so we knew what we were doing in that room I knew we knew the pretense of what was happening in the room like I knew the camera was behind me down that low so I, I knew like I, what I was doing with, where I was talking to the kids and so that wasn't the hardest part um and the, the the hardest part was uh just trying to be quiet and whisper because I have a very loud and, and um, traveling voice. So um, whispering, because it's all ADR. Yeah. We did all ADR and he put it in there. And, you know, he's got just my regular voice, like in where I'm saying to Lucas, or well, <laughs> the kids that, uh, that we, mom and dad love you very much. But then there's other voices in there that are Luke, uh, my voice or Ross, the dad, or, and then you hear Lucas and, and Dahlia talking. So Ross and I, our voices are altered yeah. at different times. So we're always listening. When we watch both, both Ross and I are like, is that me or you? Oh no, that's you, that's me. Because uh, some of it's hard to hear. And even, even shadows in the dark, we all sat down and we're like, hey, is that me or you? Or like, is that Dahlia? There's a picture of Dahlia with yeah. no mouth. So that helps people figure that out. They're like, what's that mean? Sorry, <laughs> spoilers. So um, it's uh, unbelievable what can happen with, like this little girl was wanting to be a dentist and she still wants to be a dentist. But just coming into this scene in indie film this year, She's lit up. Her mom is thrilled how excited she's been. Even Lucas. Lucas has traveled to Ontario right now with his dad to go be at the theater. Yeah, it's his first time on a plane. Like we were up on stage at the Metro Cinema, all of us, when we had our premiere. And I I got to have little Lucas beside me. You know, I love kids. I, I miss my kids being little. Yeah. So I got to hang out with these little guys and, you know, it's not hard to work with kids when you can interact with kids. And Kyle did great. Kyle did great. Well, yeah. and that kind of leads me to where, like, my next question. I'm kind of curious as to 
I mean, this is an uh, indie phenomenon. Like it kind of took over TikTok, Twitter, Facebook. And yeah. like what was like you could kind of see the ball rolling, you know, from a outsider's perspective. But like when was that relayed to you guys that it was going to be in theaters and, you know, people are talking about it? Like what was that experience like? Cry. Uh yeah. It was like November, December. Yeah. And like when, when Kyle told us that, like Edmund and Kyle already knew it got picked up by Shutter, but they couldn't tell us. Yeah. So that was so exciting. Yeah. I remember crying and looking at my mom because, you know, mom and I, we've been working hard to do like little clips and she supports me tenfold. My husband's the best support ever. They're in the films with me, the indie films, not this one but a lot of the other ones. So it's it's a whole family celebration. You know, we went for ice cream once and it's all these special moments, you know, that you don't always get to have, especially with a parent. Yeah. So I'm sure Kyle's mom is just as proud as my mom. And, you know, helping your kid get somewhere like that was just, she's so proud of me. And I'm proud of the, the, the community and, uh, the teams that are in Edmonton are great. Yeah. But Calgary's great too. Calgary does a lot of um, bigger films too. They have indie, of course. And we work together sometimes, but now with the cost of gas, we haven't seen each other as much. So Edmonton's making more films with the star groups. And it's it's been a lot of fun the last couple of years because everybody knows who I am. So I got to do another movie as a another mom role yeah I, yeah i saw that so, that's why you have four i think four on deck right now for uh upcoming projects yeah there's a fun group of uh alan alan and his group we made a movie uh good arson that's going to come out and it was fun to let that emotion out is all i'm going to say i made my little doggy pee on oh. the floor though so i feel very <laughs> bad yeah. and uh my husband said, so who did I marry? Because he'd never seen me act like that because I'm not a person like that. So you don't, you, you get to actually see more of than just the back of my head. Yeah. And uh, my, you'll see more of my, my mean me. And as you watch Grotesque, you'll see funny me. But I'm looking forward to being uh, uh, another mean me in the new year. Well, this year, because I've uh, already got a soft hold to go to Vegas in August, September. Awesome. For a lead role. I can't wait. Uh, Vegas Rat Rods, here I come. I love building cars and racing cars. So I, I'm not going to be in, in the in the big flashy places. I want to go and see other cars and, and meet, you know, the film crews down there because I watch their shows and it's, a, it's exhilarating to think that, you know, I get to go down there now. Yeah. Well <laughs> so is is so would that be like the for people that are curious about like you and kind of like what you represent or like what you bring to the table uh you you mentioned grotesque is that where like like where would you want people to go next to see what more you can offer as far as your catalog higher universe um brandon's youtube uh, okay. page higher universe uh, has a whole bunch of our videos and films we've made I, I helped out with I'm Haunted and I'm a giggling girl. Uh, so the range is huge. Yeah. Um, and the grotesque was fun. I really enjoyed grotesque because that's my voice. That's like my bubbly little uh, personality in Nina with a lot of, she's very naive. And, you know, Blanche is played by a great friend, Julie. So working with Julie and Elizabeth, who plays Mildred, it was the Best experience ever. So I recommend people go watch Grotesque. Yeah, it was, it's fun. We're working on part two. Awesome. <laughs> so that's another, yeah. And, you know, I go on Facebook and Instagram a lot. I'm working on TikTok. Uh, I have a lot of voiceover stuff. Clubhouse has actually been my my go-to right now because I am such a, a social talker. Clubhouse is like a, a YouTube or a, a Yahoo chat yeah. years ago. So I've met film people. I've met audio people. I I have help in every aspect of 
a question that I have. So, you know, it's really helped me meet and learn and grow and well, and make new acquaintances where I make another audio book. And then now they're going to hire me for acting roles. And I just been supporting everybody in indie film, you know, if you want to go for something, reach for the stars. I love it. Yeah. The, uh, the I have one final question about uh, Skin and Marink. You know, uh, I, I really like what Kyle is doing. It's, it's a, it's, unlike anything anyone else is doing. So I'm kind of curious as for, for someone that has kind of worked in a wide variety of projects, you know, what is his directing style like? Like what's it like working with him versus working with someone else? Kyle's very calm and quiet. Yeah. He didn't, you know, he wasn't intimidating. He's a very polite young man. And uh, we, we got along fine just sitting, um, we sat in the living room and just, you know, had a cup of tea and talked about stuff. Mm -hmm. He he's not, he's not demanding. He was great at telling Jamie, the other JV, the camera guy JV, what he wanted, and you know, it came out perfect because they wanted the blankets on the bed to look a particular way, and it, it was detailed really well. And yeah. he was able to get it from all of us exactly what he wanted because he. You put all those little details in there and it, it was good. It was great. I, I really look forward to working with Kyle again because he wants to make something else and, and I like the ideas and uh, I love Blair Witch Project. <laughs> I, it was one of my favorite and paranormal activity too. Yeah. It just felt right. And I was like, I loved it. And, you know, the way he explained it just, he did well because he, he sold it to me because it ended up being even more fun once I got to be on set. I, I like that you mentioned both of those films because that's kind of how I have explained it is that regardless if you like those films, like if you if you if you like Blair Witch or you don't like Blair Witch or Paranormal Activity, you will always remember the first time you saw Blair Witch, yeah. Paranormal Activity and you know add skin and marine to that list i i will always rem remember sitting in a theater in houston texas um <laughs> just being weirded out you know for you know however long but um i know it's streaming now is there anything else you want to mention about the film to kind of hype up the audience or sell the audience that maybe hasn't you know hit play just yet we just got into cineplex in toronto ontario so Canada's uh, got its first Cineplex. Awesome. So that's exciting because we have lots in Edmonton and I'd really love to go to the big theater, the big, big, big theater. Not that I don't love the beautiful Metro Theater. The Garneau is a beautiful, old, stunning theater that I've seen a few of myself in there now with um, my different movies with Brandon and, and, and the Kyle's. And it's been a lot of fun that way, but a big screen? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's that's the exciting part. I'm looking forward to going there. Well, Jamie, thank you so much for your time. You know, here at Cinedump, we let the doers know how they're doing. And Jamie, you are doing just fine. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. And a um, little interesting thing about me, I'm at, my family is actually all from Edmonton. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, my family followed the oil, came down to Texas. So I visit Calgary very often. And I'll have to hit you guys up when I'm up in that area. Thank you so much for, for talking to me today. Hey, you're welcome. And yeah, definitely. Uh, us Canadians are really nice, you know. Yeah, I, <laughs> I heard it. I heard it right away. Once we started talking, I was like, Canadian. So, <laughs> so thank oh, you no. so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, it's you're just, welcome. It, it's so much different than, than Texas. So like, um, yeah. Oh, I know. I worked with someone from Texas, came up here and filmed with us, Rick. He's yeah. from Texas, and we had a blast with him because his accent yep. and our accent, we just had a blast laughing about it. So exactly. touring around is going to be a lot of fun because, yeah, everybody seems to know that I'm Canadian. <laughs> eh? yeah. Well, if you end up meeting anything you. in Houston, just let me know. I, I will, will definitely I take will. care of you.